hi everyone in this video i am going to explain about the designing of mod 6 and mod 10 asynchronous counter so first we will see design of mod 6 asynchronous counter asynchronous counter synchronous counter these are two different counters that we can design using flip flops so asynchronous counter is having the output of first flip flop is acting as clock input for the next stage and this will be repeated for n number of stages okay so now we are going to design this mod 6 asynchronous counter mod 6 means mod 6 means this counter <coughs> mod 6 counter counts 0 1 2 3 4 5 0 to 5 clock pulses 0 to 5 clock pulses 0 to 5 clock pulses in the order 0 1 2 3 4 5 clock pulses whenever whenever sixth clock pulse occurs sixth clock pulse occurs the count resets to zeros the count resets to zeros means the flip flop outputs will become zero <coughs> that means the output of all flip flops will become zeros okay and one more important point in order to design this particular mod 6 asynchronous counter asynchronous counters we should have a t flip flop so we need t flip flops to design sorry to design this particular asynchronous counter how many flip flops we need how many flip flops we need see 0 to 5 0 to 5 means uh, how uh, how to represent the binary combination for the 0 0 means it is we can represent double 0 triple 0 or four zeros how many zeros but 5 can be represented with a maximum of 3 bits 5 can be represented with minimum sorry with minimum of 3 bits so 101 so totally how, uh, how many bits are there to store 3 bits so we should have 3 flip flops 3 T flip flops to design this asynchronous mod 6 counter ok so first let us see the truth table truth table in the sense counting table so clock pulse clock pulses 1 2 3 4 and so on and q2 q1 q0 outputs of the flip flops along with the reset pin along with the reset pin this reset pin becomes 1 to clear all the flip flops when the sixth clock pulse occurs so first for first zero all the flip flop outputs are zeros and the reset pin is also 0. First clock pulse occurs, count starts and the last flip flop will be having a change. Last flip flop will be having a transition from 0 to 1. Again reset pin is 0. When second clock pulse occurs, the count will be incremented by 1. So it will be like this. And for the third clock pulse, fourth clock pulse, For all these reset pin is also 0 and when fifth clock pulse occurs it will be 101 when sixth clock pulse occurs the count will go to 110 actually it will be 110 but when this 110 occurs automatically automatically the count goes to zeros and the reset pin becomes 1 Okay, we are setting a logic circuit along with this T flip flops we also have one logic gate to make this arrangement 
okay such that when q2 and q1 becomes one when q2 and q1 becomes one automatically we are connecting an and gate with an input of these two q2 and q1 output is equal to reset so when the and gate having this q2 and q1 as input when these two ones output becomes zero then that will be given to the clear input okay better we take uh, reverse order okay actually it is given for the reset pin to be activated okay we will take in the reverse order all these reset pin 1 when these two ones this will be 0 okay again it will be 1 when the reset pin becomes 0, it goes to the clear pin of the flip-flops so that all the flip-flops will clear the output to 0. So, here the reset happens. Reset happens, nothing but clear. Okay, I will, I will draw you in the logic diagram. Okay, so up to 0 to 5 clock pulses it counts. Whenever the 6 clock pulse occurs, automatically the count resets to 0. So, uh, count resets to 0 means that will be depending upon the type of the construction we are doing that okay so the logic diagram consists of let us see the logic diagram so three t flip flops we should consider already we know the output of first flip flop acting as the clock pulse for the second flip flop so the output of this one is connected to the clock input here yeah? negative going clock input we have considered the first input is 1 and the input for this one is 1 here the input is 1 okay now the reset pin will be having an AND gate reset pin will have an AND gate the, out, the input for this NAND gate is Q2 and Q1. This is Q2. This is Q1. This is Q0. Okay. So, this one we are giving as input and this one we are giving as input. What is the NAND gate to table? Whenever all the inputs are 1s, then the output is 0. In the remaining all cases, output is 1. So, when these two becomes 1s, output is 0 this input this output is given to clear pins of all the flip-flops clear pins of all the flip-flops clear is an active low pin already we know that so clear bar we can say clear bar this pin will be activated whenever zero comes to this particular pin okay so when these two becomes ones this will be zero this zero will Go to clear pin, clear pin and clear pin that makes the output to 0. So, whenever the 6th clock pulse occurs, automatically the count will be reset to all zeros. Okay. That means count starts from again 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and again 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This will be repeated for n number of times. Okay. This is what the logic diagram of mod 6 counter. Coming to mod 10 counter, mod 10 asynchronous counter this is also same but here instead of taking three flip-flops we should consider four flip-flops because one more 10 10 means this counter counts 0 to 9 clock pulses 0 to 9 clock pulses okay if mod n is there n minus 1 is the total count the total count will be <clears throat> 10 clock pulses but it starts from 0 to n minus 1 mod n means 0 to n minus 1 number of clock pulses it will be counted whenever the nth clock pulse occurs the count will be reset okay hope you understand so this counter counts 0 to 9 clock pulses so total 10 clock pulses Okay, how many flip-flops we need? We, we need 4 flip-flops because 9 can be represented as 1001. 
so we need four t flip flops or t flip flops to design this okay so here also i will draw here so four flip flops this is t all the t flip flops are connected to one because toggling should be done okay now this is q3 q2 q1 q0 okay so this is a negative clock signal this is a negative clock signal negative clock signal negative clock signal we know the clock signal will be applied for the first flip flop only the remaining will be acting as the output will be given to the clock signals for the next stages here also we have not given anything here this is the clock signal original clock signal this is the input clock signal and remaining are all output from the previous stages now okay we have to consider the clear pin output of the nand gate is given to all the clear pins okay see now 1010 the count will be 1010 when and the count is starting from 0002 to 1001 whenever 1010 occurs automatically count here has to reset so 1010 1010 so where is the last one here see sorry in the reverse order we are taking this is q0 q1 q2 q3 they are also in the previous video also i think previous slide see because it is negative clock we have to consider in the reverse direction for negative clock we have to consider in the reverse direction suppose if it is positive going at signal then we can consider it in the forward direction this is q0 q1 q2 so q2 and q1 we have to give okay here this is q3 q3 q2 q1 and q0 so 1010 10. so this is q1 and this is q3 this is the logic circuit diagram for this morton counter this is clear bar clear bar clear bar and here also clear bar now if you go to the truth table so clock pulse uh, q3 q2 q1 q0 reset pin so for zeroth clock pulse all flip flops are created for first clock pulse 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 one zero 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 one zero one 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 zero triple one one zero 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 one zero zero one two three four five six seven eight nine so whenever the tenth clock pulse occurs automatically count will be reset so for all these reset is equal to 1 because it is in the, it is a reverse pin and it will be 0 here the reset operation performed okay so in this way we can design any type of the mod encounter